This is Echo 3, and let's discuss vertical takeoff and landing planes. We will look at three different designs modeled after real-world aircraft. The first, and most difficult for me, is the F-35B Lightning II. Second is the iconic AV-8B Harrier II. And lastly, we will look at the V-22 Osprey. For how to make helicopters, you can check out my other tutorial on those. For contracts around the surface of Kerbin, crafts like these can be useful for landing in difficult terrain while still being able to fly efficiently and fast enough to make those contracts worthwhile. But mostly, they are just fun to build and fly. The F-35 style plane was quite a challenge to design and fly. I would test, crash, and go back to the hangar to tweak the craft, so I won't be highlighting all of that process. We will, however, be able to see just how I crafted the plane and what techniques I used. In the hangar, we can see some of the crucial parts highlighted. While the Panther engine does rotate downward to aid in vertical liftoff, most of the lift comes from the contra-rotating lifting fans in the cargo bay on the front side of the Mark II drone core. The cargo bay doors open as soon as I turn on the turboshaft engines. The fan blades are set to a fixed deployment angle of minus 9 degrees. The lifting force is then controlled by the speed and torque of the motors. I'll be showing how I set up the Cal 1000 a little later. You can see that I decreased the size of the motors to 20%. Initially, I only used one engine, but it produced too much torque on the airplane and yaw control was difficult, so I'm using this contraprop design. I'm using a G11 hinge to rotate the Panther engine. I have it bound to the translate forward backward keys. This lets the engine be controlled separately from the lift fans. The engine throttle is also controlled separately. My initial designs tried combining the engine tilt and the fan blades together, but I had difficulties with making the transition to horizontal flight. The downside to having the engine tilt, engine throttle, and fan blade throttle all be separate action groups is that piloting is rather demanding. The deployment of the air brakes on the dorsal section is also bound to the Cal 1000 along with the fan speed. While I had only intended it for looks, it ended up being very useful because the throttle is bound to the main engine, I had no visual of the lift fan throttle. So the higher the air brake deploys, the faster the fan rotates. This made controlling the separate throttles easier used to make the plane flyable. In order to make the back of the aircraft look a little nicer, I placed a couple of aerodynamic nose cones. One I placed on the hinge and the other to the aircraft. I used a cubic strut to aid in the attachment. I also placed a couple of small reaction wheels in the back to help keep the plane more stable. A couple of other things to note. I disabled the engine vectoring on the Panthers and it is not a feature that the real F-35 utilizes, like the F-22 does. But like the real F-35, this plane has an afterburner. I bound the afterburner to the RCS action group for ease of access. I haven't tested my version of the plane enough to know what its top end speed is. I utilize the brake action group as well. Besides the landing gear, there, there are a set of flaps bound to the brakes. This helps the craft be a little more stable during the VTOL stage. The flaps are not set up to control yaw, pitch, or roll. Note too that I unbound the lift fan motors from the brake action group. Looking at the Cow 1000, we can see all the different parts that are bound to it. The Cow itself is bound to the up-down translation keys. The torque and speed of the motors increase linearly, as does the deployment of the air brakes. The cargo bay doors open quickly after starting the motors. Having the lift fans in the cargo bay means they do not produce any drag when the doors are closed for horizontal flight. And that's how I set up my F-35B. If you have any better ideas, I would love to hear from you, as I found this plane very challenging to design and build. Maybe you have some better ideas that you could share with us that could uh, really help make this uh, a much more fun plane to build and design. But I had a lot of struggles with it, and this took me a lot of time to figure out what to do and how to get it right, but maybe you have a trick or know something that will really help with this. Please share. Next we're going to build an AV-8B Harrier. Personally, this was the easiest one for me to figure out. I think that is mostly because I only used one type of jet engine. The Harrier build starts off like most other types of planes. You can check out my airplane design tutorial for more information on that. You will see me frequently checking my centers of mass with the fuel and without. I'm going to want my center of thrust to always stay in line with the center of mass, 
so if my center of mass moves as the fuel is used, the craft will lose stability. I have a mod called RCS Build Aid that can show both the center of mass with the tanks full and with them empty at the same time. This craft will only be using two fuel tanks, so if you don't have that mod, you can still easily drain two fuel tanks and check this for yourself. The wings themselves were a little tricky to get right due to the limited pieces available in the stock game. I do use the Advanced Tweakables option and auto strut my wing parts to keep them more stable. And, like the actual Harrier, I angle my wings down and add a set of wheels to keep the craft stable on the runway. As I place the aerodynamic control surfaces, I try to keep the same appearance and functionality as the real Harrier. And like the F-35 build, the flaps will deploy by pressing the brakes action group. And if you watch any of my other plane design videos, you'll notice I use the same technique for placing the landing gear. I like to place all of my gear on the fuselage and use the offset tool to get the gear level and in the correct location on the craft. I like to take my time to get the gear placement right, as this helps avoid frustration on the runway. Next, I'm placing a small fuel tank on the back of the plane. This will help keep the fuel levels balanced. I'll even remove fuel from one tank to make sure the center of mass stays in the same spot. For craft that only take off and land horizontally, this is a little less important as long as the center of mass stays in front of the center of aerodynamic pressure. Now using an M06 servo as the base, I place four Juno engines. The servos themselves are limited to 90 degrees of rotation. I'll bind the rotation to the Cal 1000 and the Cal to the translation keys. This will mean as I use the rotation keys I can uh, rotate the engines for vertical lift and then over to horizontal flight. Now I am using the mod Kerbal Engineer Redo and it has a torque readout. You don't have to use the mod as you can use the visual cues in the game and use the uh, center of thrust indicator there but I find it helps me be a little bit more precise and that's what I prefer to use. But the in-game tools are adequate for this. Now I want to be very precise because the center of mass and the center of uh, thrust, if I get those right, the plane will fly beautifully. And this thing really does end up being a really fun craft to fly. I just get my action groups set up exact here, uh, make sure everything is exactly how I need it, and we're going to get ready to fly this thing. Alright, now I'm setting the action groups here, so it's going to go from... Uh, zero to 90 degrees on the on the Cal 1000 as I move that and you can see that the center of thrust moves as the action group play speed is set. Alright, uh, make a few little tweaks here, get everything set and let's see, what should we call this thing? Well, it's a Harrier, let's call it uh, the KV-8. Flying the Harrier was easy and a lot of fun. If I were a better pilot, I could probably land it about anywhere I wanted but it takes off just really easily and the transition from horizontal to vertical flight was a lot easier than um, it was with the with the F-35 build. So if you're gonna build a, a VTOL, I would, sec I would suggest uh, using a Harrier probably as your as your first design. With the with the brakes uh, set it becomes a little easier to control the aircraft in slow speeds with the flaps down and there we go. The last plane we're going to take a look at is my take on the V-22 Offspring. Like the F-35, this craft was tricky to make. I used a set of the turboprop engines. They are attached to a Mark I structural tube, and that in turn is attached to the M-12 servo. The servo is attached directly to the fuselage of the craft so that I can move it and the engine nacelle separately from the wings. It also means they are attached more securely. Each engine has three medium-sized helicopter blades. The helicopter blades do not have the ability to deploy as far as the airplane ones, so this craft ended up not being able to go as fast as I wanted. I think there may be a workaround to that by rotating the propeller blades 50 degrees in the hangar, thereby letting the blades go from 0 to 30 degrees in actual flight instead of the 0 to 15 that I am using. As is, the craft does fly well though. The engine and blade pitch are bound to the throttle control cow. The blade pitch increases linearly across the entire playtime, but the engine speed and torque increase linearly across the first half of the playtime and stays at maximum after the 50% throttle mark. This enables a stable vertical takeoff. 
Then, once the engines are rotated for horizontal flight, the throttle can be increased for faster speeds. Again, I'd like to highlight that my center of mass barely moves during the entire flight, and that my vertical thrust is in line with the center of mass. I was able to be precise with my fuel alignment as all the fuel is in the three Mark II tanks on the top of the craft. I can move those around separately from the other parts and keep everything lined up. All right, I think it's about time to take this thing out for a test. All safe. Now we can see how well this thing flies. Like the real V-22, this does struggle with roll control because the ailerons are rather close to the center of mass. If the craft were to roll too far, it becomes unstable and wants to crash upside down. So as long as you take it easy, it flies really well. Well, I think that's about it. Thanks for joining me on Let's Discuss VTOLs.